Hi everyone and welcome to those of you who have just joined us. Thank you for joining our supported learning session. This session is going to be presented by Daniel and Andrew, two of our supported learning team. Throughout the session, please feel free to use the Q&A box to the right hand side of your screen and ask any questions you have and we'll do our best to get through them towards the end of the session. I'm now going to hand over to, An to Daniel who will start our session. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Emily. Amelia, sorry. Okay, okay so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, the plan is that we're going to talk about the supported learning courses, uh, the different stages uh, that would happen uh, when a learner joins supported learning, and hopefully where you'd begin and what your final outcome would be. So we have supported learning courses, which are our discrete provision. Uh, and I'm a manager for the ROOPS programmes, uh, but we also have pre-internships and supported internships. So our courses uh, are designed for people who have an EHCP plan, so people with a learning difficulty. And because of that, our staff uh, are specialised in working with people with learning difficulties. And we also aim to try and uh, meet all the objectives that are in your EHCP plans, whether that's to become more confident, whether it's to work towards being uh, having employability skills, uh, being more independent. We'll also try and improve your maths and English along that journey as well. OK, so the running order for today's event is that we're going to start by talking about the Roots courses, they're the courses that I manage. Uh, so you'll get to see a, a video that will have the tutors who work on the Roots courses and they'll explain a little bit about what those curriculums entail. Uh, the next we'll look at some of the preparation for supported internships. So you'll get to meet some of the tutors who work on those programmes and find out about what those courses offer. Then we'll look at the supported internships and there are courses who are for people um, who have quite good employability skills. So they're for people who want to uh, move into the world of work. Uh, you'll get to hear from a past student, uh, one of our students called Shelley, uh, and she's she's travelled from Roots into the pre-internships, into the supported internships, and now she's just been offered uh, paid employment. So she's one of our success stories. Uh, and then you'll find out more about our digital uh, course, which is one of our newest courses. Uh, my colleague, Andrew, uh, we'll explain about that and then we'll have a, a Q&A session. So if there is any questions, if you type them, uh, we'll be able to answer them at the end. OK, so this is going to be a video about the Roots programmes uh, and you'll hear from our tutors. Hello and welcome to the Manchester College Roots programme. The Roots programme is delivered over two campuses. Openshaw campus where we run three courses which are Roots to Community, Roots to Learning and Roots to Skills and Employability. and the Northern campus where we run routes to learning and routes to skills and employability. Now to talk about routes to community, Emma Moorcroft. Hi, I am Emma and I'll be teaching routes to community. The course is based at Openshaw campus. It is a bespoke course, so activities and tasks meet individual targets and goals. The course runs three days a week, which is classroom based and remote learning with opportunities of community visits. During the course, learners will develop their functional maths and English skills by participating in practical tasks in and out of the classroom. Whilst developing these essential skills, learners will develop their confidence, independence and self-awareness in pair work and group work. By the end of the course, learners would have developed enough academic skills, confidence and independence so they're able to move on to another course, such as Roots to Learning. Key in math skills such as recognising numbers, 
Time and Money are learnt using a range of active learning methods such as matching activities, games, interactive whiteboard games and practical tasks. Learners will develop key English skills that will allow them to be independent in everyday life such as exploring bus timetables, simple recipes and everyday words. Learners will access the local shop to help identify and buy items required to carry out cooking and baking tasks. They will learn how to find items in store, identify prices and use self-scan machines and interact and pay with cashier. To develop independent skills, learners will help to plan, prepare and cook simple meals and snacks whilst learning to recognise and use kitchen equipment safely. They will learn the importance of kitchen hygiene and will have individual job roles to gain responsibility to keep the environment clean and safe. Per work and group work is prompted throughout the course to develop communication skills, interactive skills, teamwork and leadership skills. Learners will plan and participate in community visits. They will explore local museums, parks and shops whilst learning about road safety. They will explore local community culture and history. If learners develop enough skills to be work ready, they will have the opportunity to do work experience in the college. Job roles are in the reception, Reaper Graphics, Cube Cafe and are on premises. Routes to Learning. The tutors on the Routes to Learning courses are is myself, Bev Gilvia, and I'll be teaching at the Northern campus alongside Erica Davis, who also works at the Openshaw campus. This is one of our old um, Routes to Learning groups. The Roots to Learning course aims to develop independence and work skills. Students will focus on living skills in addition to developing their social awareness and ability to interact with others. Each aspect of the course will be tailored to the individual needs of our students and will help them learn those essential English, maths and life skills to make decisions about their next steps and work towards greater independence. Areas covered include Social awareness development, including access, communi accessing community facilities, eating out, leisure activities and social groups. Independent living skills, such as shopping, cooking and cleaning. Personal care and presentation skills, health, safety and awareness of dangers. Using public transport and developing independent travel skills. Using money and developing personal budget skills, along with English and maths functional skills. Our targeted social communication group activities. The students will work in pairs and small groups. It gives the students the skill set and confidence to practice the communication skills in a fun and safe environment. Our interactive learning skills. We, we aim to make the lessons as active as possible. We want it to be as fun and as enjoyable using different technology and apps to help support them with their reading and writing. Out and about in the community, building on the social communication skills they've worked on in the classroom, learning visits allows the students to get out in the local community to access the many museums Manchester has to offer, along with art galleries. Media City, Withenshaw Wheelers and Salford Keys. They are also use in public transport to develop their independent skills. We like to get out as often as we can to do as much as we can. And in completion of this course, you can either continue on a Roots programme or it could be a springboard onto a mainstream course, a supported internship or a pre-internship. Roots to Skills and Employability. Hi, my name's Chris Gardner and I'll be one of the teachers on this course. 
along with Erica Davis, who you've already seen. And Kim Fisher. The course runs at uh, Openshaw and Northenden and all the lessons will have a teacher and support workers in each class. Here is an overview of some of the many practical skills and qualities you'll learn and enhance or consolidate whilst you're on the course. I'll now give you a little bit more detail on each area. Developing teamwork. You'll undertake a variety of tasks designed to help you become an excellent team player, which is a key employability skill, whilst also learning the strengths and weaknesses of your classmates so you can work together more effectively you will learn that working a team is very rewarding and you can achieve so much working with others and it will also help to develop your communication skills. You'll also have the opportunity to be creative whilst working on enterprise projects and whilst doing this you will work together to plan, make, produce a product, promote it and then sell it. This will provide all sorts of opportunities for you to be creative in your thinking, designing, promoting etc whilst again adding to your employability skills. Many of these skills can be used when we plan, organise and carry out a charity event, such as last year's group who made cards and hot chocolate to sell to raise money for a local charity. An important aspect of the course and life is to learn about healthy living. We will learn about how we can live healthier lives. This will include looking at suitable exercises, healthy foods, things to avoid such as smoking and junk food, and you'll also have the opportunity to make healthy meals, which leads me on to independent living skills. You'll have the opportunity through the course to plan, prepare and make simple meals and follow simple recipes to make delicious, healthy food. Whilst doing this, you'll learn more about health and safety, kitchen hygiene and how to use weights, measures and a host of kitchen equipment. A key aspect of the course is functional maths and English. You'll have ample opportunity to improve your skills in these areas using a variety of interactive and paper-based resources. Where appropriate, you may be entered for a qualification. There will be ample opportunity to improve your ICT skills as well, with as much support as you need. In order to help prepare you for the world of work, we will support you in creating your own CV to impress employers, and you will be supported in a range of internal college-based work placements. These will be in the cafe, preparing simple meals, keeping the cafe clean and serving customers, working in the library, placing books back where they belong and following instructions. And you can also work in the office, filing, taking messages and dealing with the public. Finally, another fun learning opportunity comes through our educational visits. This provides an excellent opportunity to access a wide variety of leisure activities and places of interest in Manchester. From museums to the Trafford Centre, from art galleries to the cinema, local parks and leisure centres. You can expand your mind, your independent travel skills and your knowledge of what to do in your community and your city. Throughout the course, you'll be supported and encouraged to chase your goals in life and stretched and challenged to achieve your full potential. We hope and we are sure that you will make new friends, overcome new challenges and have fun whilst learning before going on to the next stage of your educational, uh, educational journey. Brilliant. OK, so as, as you can tell from that video, um, one of the themes or some of the themes that seem to run through all our programmes are your independent skills growing, your employability uh, levels getting higher, uh, embedding maths and English in a lot of the tasks that we do. Uh, we, we want to grow your confidence. Uh, we want to grow your social skills um, and it seems each course and throughout your whole journey they will always be addressed but the expectation will grow at each stage so what uh, is acceptable in year one by year two we'd expect much more from you so you'll constantly be developing will constantly be challenging you to become better at all of those skills it was briefly mentioned then as well about uh, work experience we have staff within the college who are called uh, job coaches and they work within our departments and their role is to uh, support you whilst you do work experience. 
in the roots programs that work experience would be just within the college so it may be working at the college reception or at the college canteen uh, in the library uh, it could be working with the premises officers it could be working in some of the tool shops like uh, the woodwork shop where wood is cut to, to size uh, and there'd be a lot of machinery used there. We also have at the Openshaw campus uh, a specific training cafe which is called the Cube Cafe uh, and our plan is that the vast majority of students will do some work experience depending on the level of your course will depend how long your work experience placement lasts. Once you leave Roots uh, if you were to go on to one of the supported internship programmes or the pre-internship, then work experience would take up a greater amount of your timetable. Once you're on one of the supported internship programmes, it's the majority of your timetable because those programmes are really working with you so that within that amount of time you become work ready and our hope is that you'll be offered uh, employment at the end of that. So this is the preparation for supported internships. Uh, so I'm going to play a video here and you'll get to meet some of the staff and hear about that programme. So we're now going to talk about the pre and supported internship pathways. My name's Charlotte and I'm a pre internship teacher. So the preparation for supported internship is based mainly at City Labs campus, which is in Manchester City Centre at the Manchester Hospital site on Oxford Road. Um, you will have most of your sessions there, but some sessions will also take place at your local campus, which will either be Openshaw or Northern Dun. The course is a one year course and will prepare you for a supported internship. So you will do up to three days of study and that will be a mixture of classroom activity, community visits, work placements and some online learning. You will develop your employability skills alongside your functional skills in English and maths. You will all take part in a work placement within an area of interest with some job coach support. We hope that you will develop your confidence and your independent skills and that will enable you to progress to the next stage. So by the end of this programme, we would like you to have a better understanding of career options and we hope that you will progress on to a supported internship. So a little bit more about the locations. The City Labs, as I said, was based at Manchester Hospital, which is on Oxford Road in Manchester City Centre. It's a very busy bus route, so you can access it from all over the city. Um, if you live in the south of Manchester, you will also perhaps attend some sessions at Northern Dun campus. You might meet your job coach there. And if you live in the north of the city, you will attend at Openshaw. We also expect that you'll do lots of learning in the community when you're out and about. And we hope to build this up over the year. So what you'll learn. The first unit in employability and community is skills, qualities and interests for working life. So you'll learn about your own skills and qualities and you'll think about your own job interests and you'll match those to those required in the workplace and look at some job profiles that match your interests. You'll also learn how to present yourself for work. So that might be what you wear. It might be um, personal presentation and hygiene. It might be uh, developing communication skills and interview skills and also presenting information such as CVs and personal statements. You'll then go on to learn about health and safety at work. So you'll learn about the responsibilities of employees, workers and employers. You're doing a unit in which you work with other people and you'll set your own ground rules and action plan and review your effectiveness at working with other people. In enterprise, you'll learn about what an enterprising person is, their skills and qualities and attributes, and you'll also generate ideas for an enterprise activity or service and then participate in one, and you'll develop uh, customer service skills. You'll also do a unit in community action in which you either work in the community or you work with a community group or you actually put on a community activity. 
We expect you all to work towards personal and social development targets and you will recognise and record your own progress and achievement. And that's what that RAPA stands for, recognising and recording your progress and achievement. You'll develop functional skills in maths and English. Some of you will work towards qualifications and others will develop skills in practical contexts, real life contexts and in the workplace. So here are some examples of work experience. So the first one is at a Manchester Food Bank. Uh, we had some students who volunteer there and they work with the service users and set up parcels. And they also um, take in produce and sort it and weigh it, etc. The second one is a placement that was at a cafe at the Pankhurst Centre, which is at the hospital site. Uh, the third one was a self placement in a nursery uh, close to the student's home. And the final photograph shows um, enterprise and all students will um, participate in enterprise and develop their work skills. So I'm now going to hand over to Andrew, who is a teacher on the supported internship programme, and he'll tell you a little bit about that programme and about the expectations of this pathway. Thank you, Charlotte. Yes, so my name's Andrew and I'm a tutor on the Supported Internship Programme. Now, as Charlotte said, it's often the next step following on from the pre-internship. Now, you can see a map here, and on it are different locations of where we are based around Manchester City Centre. We have five sites. One of them is Manchester City Council. We have two hospital sites, one at Manchester Central Foundation Trust and the other Withenshaw Hospital. We're also based at Manchester Airport and Media City in Salford Keys. Now, what does the course look like? So as I just said, we are based at a host employer. So one of those five sites across the city. The course lasts for one year and you get to try up to three different work placements. The course runs four days a week and the study programme includes employability skills, personal development, maths, English and work placement. Interns take on the role of staff, not student. The focus of this programme is to get a paid job, so you always need to be professional and show what you are capable of in work. Interns wear uniform or smart clothing, and they also have to wear often a staff ID badge. You'll always have support when you're at work if you need it, and that will come in the form of a job coach. So at no point will you be expected to just come straight in and expect that you know the job, there will be support available for you. The ultimate aim of this course is to get a paid job. Now this is the deal. The deal is a contract between students and staff and outlines the expectations required to get a job. The aspects it includes are things such as being respectful, collaborative, proactive, professional, ambitious, responsible, if you keep to your part of the deal, it will equip you for being successful going forward into paid employment. Now I'm going to pass on to my colleague Mark to explain more about the programme. Thanks Andrew. Yeah, so I'm Mark. I'm also a teacher on the support internship programme. Um, and a little bit, a little bit more information about the programme. So the majority of your learning is done outside of the classroom. Um, work placement is a big part of, of what the supported internship is. Although in the classroom we do uh, we do cover areas such as employability, personal development, functional skills, English and maths. Um, with functional skills, we have students that do the qualifications and we also have students that that will work on um, their functional skills in a practical practical way, so in, in the workplace and also in the community. We complete a diary or a blog, and, and this is to um, this is to highlight all the really good things that, that you've done on placement. It's to highlight what you've learned, um, what you might have found difficult or challenging. Um, and it's also good to, to kind of look back at that as well and see see the progress that you've made throughout the year. There's also opportunities to, to do the Duke of Edinburgh Award. So if you um, speak to your tutor about that, that that'll be um, that'll be the best way to get that started. 
So there's lots of different work placements. And as I said, that's the, the, the main part of this course is, is being out in the workplace and doing um, a, a real job. Um, you take the role as a staff, not, not a student. Um, some of the roles that we've got on here, so we've got the porters at the hospital. So that's uh, transporting um, anything for, from one part of the hospital to, to another part. There's retail roles, so in this picture here, it's in, in a bakery. We've got catering roles. There's catering roles across the city, um, and that could be in, in hotels, restaurants, cafes, bars, There's lots of different places, um, and lots of job opportunities in catering. There's office and admin work. Um, so this lady in the picture is, uh, is working for the NHS now. Um, and that's that's fantastic. We've got quite a lot of students that will move into those sorts of roles. Front of house roles, so that could be again at hotels or restaurants. Um, it's it's really aimed at somebody that likes uh, working with customers, somebody that somebody that can have a big smile on their face throughout the day, um, and and deliver really really good service. Um, so that's something that some students really enjoy doing. Uh, there's also retail opportunities, so working in shops that could be um, stocking up, that, that could be uh, dealing with customers on a on a day to day basis. We've also got domestic roles, so domestic roles will will involve um, cleaning, um, cleaning, making sure the place is looking uh, looking as good as it can for, for customers and, and, um, and clients that might come into a building. So the, this picture is, is actually somebody that's working at the airport uh, as a train valetor. So we have lots of success stories and, and we can't share them all with you, um, but this is just one. So this is Chloe. Um, Chloe was on the support internship at Manchester Foundation Trust uh, in 2019-2020. Um, she has been with us uh, for a number of years. She started on the Roots courses, came through uh, the pre-internship um, and has been really, really successful on the support internship. So she came to us with an ambition to work in a caring role so either with children or the elderly but because of ex her experience on the support internship and trying something new she she's found uh, a passion for uh, hospitality um, she she tried a placement that maybe she, she wouldn't have thought of before she wasn't really interested in before but she's been really successful and she's actually gained paid, paid employment um, as a cafe assistant at the Manchester University Bistro uh, she's had fantastic feedback from from uh, her employer, which is which is great. So what what do you need to do to prepare for the support internship? So if it's something that you're interested in, definitely speak to your speak to your family or, or guardians about the support internship. Um, it's really important to understand that this is this is for young people who want a job. OK, so you've got to be motivated to to want to work. Um, it's very different to you going and doing an, uh, a regular college course. OK. You'll be travelling to different parts of the city, so you won't just be coming to a, a college campus. Um, so we do recommend that you, you, you try the journey. Um, you know, you practice the journey because you might be travelling by tram or bus. Um, so we, we recommend that you do that journey a couple of times with um, with family or friends um, and especially try that at peak time. So when it is going to be a little bit busier. Something to consider is the C plus travel pass that Transport for Greater Manchester have. Um, so have a look on their website because that that will give you free uh, free transport around Greater Manchester. So th thank you very much for, for listening um, and we hope to see you in the future. Brilliant. So we're now going to talk about the pre and supported internship. Pass. OK, so here's one of our students. Uh, this is Shelley uh, and she's been with us for about three years or was with us for three years. She's just 
got herself a job. Um, so she started on Roots, then went to the pre-internship and then went to the supported internship. So she'll be able to tell you a little bit about her journey. Hi Shelley, uh, thanks for agreeing to do this video for us. Um, if I can just ask you a few questions, is that okay? Yeah. yeah. How long have you studied at the Manchester College? I have studied at Manchester College for three years and I completed my final course in April. Thank you. What made you choose a Roots course when you started at the college? Um, I wanted to improve my personal and life skills and my functional skills and to develop my confidence. Excellent. And prepare for work as well. What did you enjoy about the routes to skills and employment? Um, preparing food and selling it to students and staff and, um, and developing my independent and work skills. Brilliant. So you then progressed on to a pre-internship course. How did this help you prepare for employment? Uh, I learned about my skills and qualities and interests and matched them to, ma to potential jobs and learned how to present myself positively to employers and developed my confidence on work placement in a nursery. Thank you. So you've just completed a supported internship at Manchester Foundation Trust. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about your experiences and work placements on this course? Um, I was working as a cafe assistant at Christie's Bistro. I was um, serving food and drinks and I was um, clearing tables and asking the customers what they wanted and I've always wanted to work with children and babies so I done a work placement at St Mary's Hospital where I helped all the new mums with different things and kept the ward tidy and making all the beds. Excellent. And I believe you were offered a job, weren't you, at your first placement, yeah. but wanted to continue to your placement working with women and babies? Yeah, yeah. so I like working with little babies and children because I do work more with little babies because I like got patience and you, I'm, I'm calm around them. Yeah, thank you. So how did the experience help you to secure um, positive employment as your outcome? Um, um, I, um, um, I was offered a full-time job as a maternity support worker level two um, and I just help all the mums as well, as well um, with feeding and doing baths Okay. So there's different jobs. Yeah. Excellent, that sounds really good. Yeah. So what would you say to new students who are thinking of a similar pathway at the Manchester College? What advice would you give them? Um, think about your, school, your um, skills, qualities and interests. Plan ahead of what you want to do and where to go and, and you'll get loads of support of different staff and just work hard um, to keep your part of the deal and you're sure there'll be a success in what you want to do in the future. Thank you, Shelley. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Great. OK, so uh, the next topic is going to be the digital supported internship, which is one of our newest courses. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to my colleague, uh, Andrew Parkinson, and he can tell you a little bit more about that. Thanks, Danny. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about our newest support and internship. Uh, this internship has a, digitry, a digital industry focus, 
Now, the programme follows the same model as the other internships, but it is for students who have aspirations to work in the digital sector. You will work with industry professionals in a digital agency environment in Manchester City Centre. This is a partnership with Digital Advantage and Pure Innovations. You will complete a range of briefs for clients. These could include social media, marketing, website design, coding, promotional videos and creating apps. Could you go on to the next slide, Danny? Certainly. Thank you. So the course is one year and for the majority of the day, students will be on work placement within the digital and creative environment. You will receive support from a tutor, job coach, employment on officer and industry experts. The focus of the programme is to move into paid employment. This could include freelance work, an apprenticeship or gaining employment within a digital or creative role. There is no qualification from the programme. Instead, studio staff will support you to build a portfolio of work, practice interview skills and build your CV. There will also be regular pastoral sessions to help with health, well-being and personal development. You will also have the opportunity to complete maths and English qualifications if appropriate. You will work with an employment officer from Pure Innovations who will help provide paid opportunities and to source external work placements. Can we go on to the next slide, Danny? Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks for listening to our presentation. We look forward to working with you soon. And uh, now I believe we're going to be uh, answering some questions. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for that. And thank you, Danny. Cool. Um, so we will be taking some questions um, and you guys can just let me know who wants to answer it. So the first question will be, um, will I get to go on any trips whilst I'm at college? OK, well, I, I can answer that. Uh, yes. You definitely will. Um, a, a lot of the skills that we want you to master, we want you to put into practice. So a lot of the time we will be going out of the classroom uh, outside of the, the college campus. Um, so we will go on. We, we'd like to call them educational visits rather than trips, but they will be fun at the same time. So yes, uh, trips are part of the course. That's good. Thank you. Um, if I have any problems whilst I'm at college, who can I talk to? Right, well, there'll, there'll be numerous people you can talk to. Well, one of the things that will happen quite quickly is you'll, you'll start to build, uh, hopefully, a, a strong relationship with the support staff who will be inside the classrooms with you, with the job coaches uh, and especially with your tutors. So if there was an issue or a problem, you can go to them uh, and they'll always be able to listen uh, and they'll help you uh, and direct you to another organisation if needed. If it was something else you wanted to talk to, you could speak to the student experience team. Uh, we have specialist staff there who can deal with safeguarding issues. If it was something you didn't feel you wanted to raise uh, with the staff you work with every day with your teachers. Uh, but if, if something was to happen and you needed help immediately, any of the staff in the college would be able to help you. Uh, you'll get you'll get to know the reception staff quite quickly. You'll get to know uh, lots of people around the college. So that if there was a problem, there'll be multiple people who you could talk to. And we check in on you on a regular basis. Part of the course will be that the staff will ask you how you're getting on. So uh, yeah, you, you have any problems, there'll, there'll be people you can speak to. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next question is, will some of my lessons be online? Yes, uh, definitely. Be because of the situation with COVID, uh, we're, we're trying to, to minimise the amount of people, uh, the amount of students and staff who are on the college at any one time, because otherwise the buildings would become very, very busy and it would be difficult to uh, implement the social distancing. So uh, a, a quite high percentage, at least half of your course will be delivered online. And that may be um, that a tutor contacts you in the morning via email or via Zoom or Skype or Teams or WhatsApp, whatever platform you use, um, and gives you a task which you then work on until the afternoon when the 
tutor will then contact you again to see how you've you've got on and give you feedback on your results or it may be that actually for a period of time maybe three or four hours continuously you're taking part in an online session like this where the teacher will be speaking directly to you and you'll be able to engage with the teacher we've been doing some online lessons since the, the, the lockdown and they've been really successful and we've all kind of learned together and it's been a really fun process so it uh, Hopefully that will continue moving forward, but Microsoft Teams and all the facilities involved with that has really opened up lots of uh, new ways for us to kind of teach and to learn. So hopefully that will continue from September with, uh, with that kind of uh, enthusiasm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we've had another question about class sizes. So I'm assuming that just leads on from there, doesn't it? So those classes that will be on campus, those will those be affected? Yeah, I mean, normally uh, we like our classes to be around um, 10 or, or 12 students in, in a group, uh, but due to the fact that we're having to implement social distancing, uh, class sizes now will be closer to about six, uh, six or seven. So if we do have a class of 12, it will be split into the middle. So there'll be a group A and a group B. Uh, and you'll find out uh, in August whether you're a group A or B. You'll find out be before you start because you'll be issued with a timetable. That's great. That makes a lot of sense. Um, does everyone have the same opportunity to visit different places on their course? It, I, I think each each program has a slightly different objective. So if you're on a Rooster Community course, the objectives of that program would be different than if you were on the supported internship course. So um, everyone will be doing something slightly different, but the, the main focus is that we try to meet the objectives that are laid down in your EHCP. So whatever is written in your plan, that's what we'll be trying to uh, to achieve during your time with us. As far as uh, places with the internship, uh, you would identify at the beginning what site is most appropriate for you as far as travel and the interests of work aspirations that you might have. Uh, and then we work with you to see what uh, jobs you might want to do. And then we identify that placement for you. So everybody has the same opportunity to an extent, but what we try to do is make sure that uh, each individual has the right opportunities that suits them. We also, uh, with the internship, I'm sure the other programs too, and it kind of relates back to um, the, the trips uh, we always make sure and hopefully this will continue and I know it's a bit uncertain at the moment with uh, how we can do this perhaps moving forward but certainly we've uh, we've done bowling trips and gone out for meals and uh, really tried to um, do fun things as well as just work related to try and uh, expand people's knowledge of perhaps the city centre what's out there different friendships and things like that so we always encourage people to to visit as many places as possible around the city. That's great, thank you. And just leading on from what you've said there, someone's asked, will they get help travelling to and from college? Uh, um, unfortunately, we, we haven't been able to do that this year. Uh, what would normally happen is that during this period, that, that is when we'd be uh, liaising with students and trying to give them, we don't do travel training, but we do route planning, which would be where perhaps we'd meet a student at their home and show them the correct buses to get to one of the campuses or one of the external sites if they're on the uh, supported internship. But well, we're unable to do that uh, because of the limitations uh, that COVID have brought. So uh, there isn't in, in that respect. Uh, another thing is some students, uh, especially if they're on our uh, more introductory courses, um, may actually not be able to access public transport. That might be something that either causes them a lot of anxiety or is, is beyond uh, their skill base uh, as it stands at the moment. Um, so our advice to those students and to those families would be to contact Home to School uh, where you can make an application um, and if uh, your needs uh, are deemed as uh, necessary then you you may qualify for a, a taxi service but that would be that wouldn't be something that the college do that's something that the families need to do independently and it's home to school uh, and they're part of uh, the local authority really you, you will get uh, any learner with an EHCP uh, is entitled to a concessionary plus pass I think Mark mentioned it uh, when he was doing his video 
uh, that would be uh, a thing that I'd advise all students to apply for um, because it will get you free bus bus travel and it will also get you uh, free travel on the trams and also on trains uh, quite a distance away from Manchester Centre as well. So that's a really good thing to have. Um, so ho hopefully that, that's answered your question. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, another question here says, will I have to do exams as part of my course? Uh, the, the majority of the skills that you are learning uh, are going to be very practical. So we capture them normally via um, photographic evidence and video evidence of you actually doing the tasks. Uh, when it comes to, so you're building a portfolio of work, a portfolio of evidence throughout your time with us. Um, when it comes to the maths and English, uh, they have to be more structured and they are delivered in the form of a, an exam uh, towards the end of the year. So uh, if we, we can progress your maths and English to a point where we feel you can gain a, a qualification, then you, you would need to sit a test. But the rest of the main programme is captured via uh, photograph and video evidence. Great, thank you. Um, another question here, will I be able to study other things at college on my days off? Um, unfortunately not, no. Sometimes we have that, that if a student is doing, let's say, a, a three day programme, which the majority of um, programmes at the Manchester College are, uh, we sometimes asked, well, on the other days, could they perhaps take part in an IT session or um, an ESOL session or uh, a motor vehicle session, all the other things that the college offer. Unfortunately, they can't do because the the roots program is deemed, or the pre internship or the supported internships are deemed as full time programs. Um, so there isn't the ability to study something else in the, on your days off. What with the way uh, the college is as well at the moment due to COVID, uh, it, you wouldn't even be able to come onto the college college grounds on the days that you're not in class uh, because we need to keep the, the footfall to a minimum. What we can help you with and advise you with is possibly volunteering opportunities, uh, youth clubs, other activities that you can get involved in on the days when you're not taking part in a class. And I think that they uh, have a lot of value uh, because they will help you grow in confidence and also uh, help you practice your social skills and social interaction. Yeah, it's a great alternative as well. Um, another question here is, can I wear what I like to college? Uh, you, you don't you don't need to wear a uniform uh, and you don't need to wear a, a shirt and trousers. So you can wear your normal clothes. If you like to wear uh, track suits, you can wear track suits. If you like to wear hoodies, you can wear hoodies, T-shirts, trainers, all the kind of things that you like to wear. The only issue is, is if any of the, if it had a, a logo on it or a message on it that some people may find offensive, then you wouldn't be able to wear that. We wouldn't want something perhaps with uh, something violent on it or something associated with, with drugs. Um, the other thing is as well that because we want the college to be as safe as possible, we need to be able to see who is coming onto the college campus. So you're not... So you can wear your cap or your hood up uh, on your way into the college, but as soon as you actually step through the doors, then you have to take your cap off, you have to take your hat off, you have to take your hood down as well. Can I just uh, add to that as well? So on the sports internship, it's different than being on a college campus in the fact that it's a professional uh, place where the students will be based. So we have a dress code for most of the students but uh, that's usually based on the kind of job that they're doing so it might be that they have to wear uh, PPE to protect themselves in the role that they're doing it might be that they've got some kind of uniform that they might need to wear or it might be that they need to wear some kind of office dress code so if you are to come on to the supported internship then we'll support you and talk to you and help you once you've identified what placements you're going to be doing to ensure that you're wearing the correct clothes for that uh, but we do usually ask that uh, you wear smart clothes from the beginning, just so that you've got a kind of generic dress code so that we're dressing as professionally as possible once we're on these uh, these different uh, sites across uh, across Manchester. That's great, thank you. Um, another question here about the supported internship. Um, will I get paid when I'm on my supported internship? 
Uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, you won't, you won't be getting paid. Um, the internship is a study program and the purpose of the course is to give you the experiences you need to learn what is involved in the workplace. Um, so you'll be bu building your CV and trying up to three different work placements um, to help build that experience in different working environments. Um, so you'll, you'll be getting the support that you need to kind of get to that point of, of employment. Um, so you receive support to transition to that next step. And once you've built those skills necessary, we'll, we'll help you secure a paid job. So it's that transition phase really. So it's still a study program at this point. Great, great, thank you. Um, another question, does everyone start with roots and work their way up? It, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, people can start at anywhere within the ladder. Um, we sometimes find that people start uh, on one of our more uh, entry programmes, one of our more initial programmes like Roots to Community, where the next rung on the ladder in theory would be Roots to Learning, but that doesn't need to be the case. Some people jump the ladder or they show that because of a certain skill, uh, perhaps they're very good at the, the Excel, at the work experience, and maybe they could jump uh, more quickly to the pre-internships or even the supported internships. So no one has to start anywhere on the ladder and you don't have to go to the next rung. It, it's very, very fluid. We, we try to make the programmes as bespoke as possible. We, we find that certain learners due to their uh, independent skills or levels of confidence or their academic level, that it's better for them to start at, at roots before moving on to the other program so that we can give you a strong foundation so that by the time you move on to the supported internships, you stand a much stronger chance of being successful. And uh, on the internships, we have uh, a range of students that might come through that process or they might come directly to us. So quite often we have students that come to us as kind of their final step of education and they'll just have the one year program on the internship or potentially the two year program if you're to go on to the pre-internship. Great, thank you. Um, just coming up to our last couple of questions. Uh, this question is, what can I have for my lunch at college? It's a great uh, question. Uh, well, you, th there's, there's quite a lot of choice, actually. Um, initially, when we reopen in September, um, I'm not sure which of the cafes and restaurants will be open. But normally, uh, there's, uh, there's a bistro, uh, there's the Cube Cafe, there's a Starbucks. Uh, there's a, a large canteen, so there's there's quite a few options. So you'll be able to get your uh, standard type of things, which would be there'd be pre-packed sandwiches, there'd be salads, there'd be uh, chips and quiche, pizza, burgers, all those kind of things. But also there'll be more um, specialised items that might meet your uh, dietary requirements. But there's always a vegetarian option. There's a, a plant-based vegan option. There'll be uh, options that will meet uh, the needs of your uh, religious requirements. Uh, and also, though, if, 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 you, if you have any food allergies, if you discuss them with the, the tutors and the staff who you enrol with, uh, hopefully that they'll be able to advise you. But the canteen staff as well, if you mention to them that you have perhaps a, a gluten intolerance or a dairy intolerance or a problem with nuts, I mean, the, the list goes on. Uh, they'll be able to advise you and steer you towards the, the meals which are best suited to you. Okay. Although there will be a big variety. My advice on the uh, internship is usually to bring a packed lunch just because uh, most of the places that we're based are very busy, such as an airport or a hospital, and they often charge a premium for the, uh, the dinners there. So there's a lot of options and some very nice places to eat, but they're often very expensive. So I usually recommend bringing a pat lunch, but uh, it's entirely up to you. Yeah, great. Um, and just our last question here. Uh, will my benefits be affected when I'm coming to college? Uh, no, no, they shouldn't be, no. Um, we, whichever programme you do, whether it be a Roots or uh, one of the supported internships, they're deemed as full-time educational courses. So it's the, uh, so when it shouldn't affect any benefits. It'll just be the same as that you're, you're still in full time education. That's great. Thank you. Um, and it looks like that's concluded our session for today. So thank you again for joining us. We hope you've got loads out of this session. 
Um, please make sure to, to visit the Couch to College page and see if there's anything else that's of interest to you. And um, we've got loads of sessions on. Um, but thank you again, and we hope you have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Hopefully. Uh...